Plums are finally ready, and there are lots of them. Last year, if you were watching any of my videos, I made a plum jam, and it's very good. I like it, but I still have a number of jars left, so I won't be making more this year. I don't really need it. I got thinking about chutney the other day, and you make chutney out of all kinds of fruit, different fruit. So I did a search online, and sure enough, there are a number of plum chutney recipes. And I have selected one that I'm going to use as a sort of a guide, I guess. It won't be, won't be followed exactly, and you'll see what I mean as, as I go on. One thing, it says four pounds of Italian prune plums, which would be much larger than these, as you can see. These are not terribly large. Get them a few here. There's four in my hand. So I'm suspecting that with these, there's a higher ratio of stone in the center to fruit, so I'm probably going to go with five pounds or so of, of these. And a few other little changes along the, along the line, but the same basic chutney. So hang on here, and in a few minutes we'll be starting to make chutney. Well, that's my harvest. Took all of 10 or 15 minutes. It's a good sized picnic basket. I'm not sure what's in it. I'll know when I weigh it shortly, but I would say between 8 and 10 pounds as a guess. And I could fill that five or six more times probably off of that tree. I just stood in one place to do that. So it's a very productive tree this year. Unfortunately, they all ripen at once. You either preserve them or eat as many as you can eat and then the rest spoil. And they're dropping on the ground. The ones that are overly ripe are dropping on the ground. And when that happens, quite quickly, it's followed by hornets eating the overripe ones or getting the juice out of the overripe ones on the ground. And it's not terribly safe to keep picking after that happens, so I'm glad I got them at this time. The kitchen scales weigh up to 11 pounds, or 5 kilograms, it says, or 11 pounds. And this weighs more than that. <laughs> I weighed the empty basket before I went out, and that was a pound and two ounces. So I suspect I'm right. It's somewhere around 10 pounds. So I'll use roughly half of those, I guess, to make my product here that's coming up in a moment. Chutney. I forgot the name of it that quickly. It's going to be a spicy chutney, and you'll see why in a few seconds here. Well, as I said, I guess I'm going to go with five pounds. I don't spray or anything, so these are completely organically grown, but it's been a long, hot, dry summer, so I thought I would put them in a clean sink and at least wash off any dust that might be on them. And now I have to remove the stems, uh, sort of cut them in half and remove the stone from the middle and then quarter them. And I'll bring you back when I've done that. It took quite a while to... Uh, take the stones out of all of those and, and quarter them up. They're small, a bit tedious to work with. Uh, I'll take you through the ingredients here and then we'll get making this. A cup and a quarter of just white granular sugar. A cup and a quarter of brown sugar. A cup of cider vinegar. cup and a half of golden raisins, one small onion, thinly sliced. <laughs> it's a good thing they called it small onions. That's what I grew this year, was small onions. A third of a cup of grated ginger. I guess that's roughly a third of a cup. Three cloves of garlic, thinly sliced. tablespoon of salt, and uh, I didn't say, but I'm sure they mean a non-iodized salt. Usually it's what you use in any preserves. This is a product called flax salt. It's flakes of uh, sea salt, non-iodized, just natural sea salt. Four and a half teaspoons of mustard seeds. And it called for two and a half teaspoons of red uh, pepper flakes. And I'm going to use my own fresh 
Thai chilies out of the garden. I'm going to also mince that one up. I just wanted to show you the size. I used eight of these. Thai chilies are hot. Um, there are certainly hotter chilies out there, but a Thai chili is as hot as I want to go. So that much chili in this will, well, it won't make it unbearable, but it'll give it a bit of a kick. So let's start putting this together on the stove. If I haven't said already, I will, as I usually do, put the uh, link below to this recipe, which is on the internet. This one is from the sauveur.com uh, website. S-A-V-E-U-R dot com. I've put the cider vinegar and both kinds of sugar in my favorite heavy bottom kettle that I, well, it's actually a pressure cooker that I prefer to make jams in. And now you add the golden raisins the thinly sliced onion the garlic trying not to get these hot chilies on my fingers my Thai chilies, that was eight Thai chilies minced, sliced more. the salt mustard seeds and the ginger this is, seems to be staying at a boil but what you're supposed to do now is just stir this in and bring it back to a simmer once it's brought back to a simmer you add the plums and uh, it says reduce it to a very low simmer and cook for three to three and a half hours well until it is thick enough in the consistency that you would want for your for your chutney so I'll bring you back when I have the plums in here all the plums added and I have reduced the heat a lot it says to cook it for three and three quarters hours over medium or low heat or until it is you know thick and the consistency that you're looking for so I've given it a stir and there certainly is lots of liquid down in there if you can see it the salt and uh, well the vinegar as well sugars as well I guess cooking with the plums will draw the moisture out of the plums as they cook down so all of that has to be evaporated away before you can it. I'll probably bring you back and show you what it's looking like at least halfway through the process. Well, this is after almost an hour of simmering, and that's what I'm doing, just this low simmer. That's what he recommended. And as you can see, it is very wet, so I can see where it will definitely take, if not the three and three quarters hours, something very close to it. I might turn the heat up just a bit, but I don't want to scorch on the bottom and lose all of these ingredients here. So I'll bring you back and show you in another hour or two. It's now been bubbling away for three hours, and it's thicker. It has reduced quite a bit, but I certainly can see where it will go for at least another 45 minutes to an hour before it gets to a a thickness that I would like to see for chutney. So I'll bring you back when it's time to put it in the bottles and at that time I'll let you know how much longer I boiled it. I've been cooking it for a little over four hours and as you can see it has reduced considerably. It says to cook until it is dark and thick. Well, <laughs> How dark or how thick, I guess is the question. But this is the point that I'm stopping at anyway. I think it will still thicken a bit as it cools in the jars. Um, and of course it's not a jam or anything. You're not trying to get something that you could spread. It's a chutney. So I will see what I can do here about getting some of it in jars anyway. I sterilized five 
pint jars, 500 milliliter jars. The recipe, if you look it up, uh, is using half pint, eight ounce jars, whatever. I just can't be bothered with anything that small. fresh lid on that one anyway. I've got three of the five jars out here and I don't know, three may not be enough, might take four I guess, but I don't think I'll need all five. I'll bring you back when I have finished putting it in jars. There was just enough to make four pint jars. I might be able to scrape a little bit out of the bottom of the uh, pot to uh, having a little dish to try but there was very little left over and the instructions say to can it in a hot water bath for 10 minutes and I'm doing that uh, it has came back to a boil quite quickly because the jam jars are so hot probably hotter than boiling water actually and I just I just really don't think it's necessary with this particular recipe it's a high acid recipe you've added a cup of vinegar to it um, I think they would have sealed just fine on their own in sterilized jars and probably didn't really need this, but since I'm doing this as a demonstration and it's what they have said to do, that's what I will do. So These will be allowed to cool for, and again this is one of those recipes that says let it cool for 24 hours, well I probably don't do that, but I let it cool until it's thoroughly cooled and then it'll go on the shelf with the rest of the preserves in the basement. But we'll have a little something to taste here in a few minutes, I hope. Well, they're just out of the hot water bath. I did manage to find a little bit in the bottom of the pot that I could use as a sample. Three of the four jars have already popped and sealed. They haven't been out for more than a couple of minutes yet, so there's one more pot to go. And it does thicken up a bit as it cools. That's not room temperature yet, but that's cooled quite a bit. I'm just going to try it on a cracker. Good with cheese, good with various kinds of meats. As you know, I don't eat meat. But... Mm, yeah. Lots of good flavor. And the combination of the ginger and the Thai chilies have given it quite a bit of spice, a bit of heat, but it's, well, to my taste, it's not unbearably hot anyway. I know a lot of people don't care for hot, spicy things, but I don't find this to be terribly hot, just pleasantly hot as far as I'm concerned. But if you wanted to make this and you don't like hot, spicy food, it's no problem. Just leave out the the chilies or put in less, whichever you want. It won't hurt the outcome, just affect the heat and the flavor in the end. So, Thank you very much for watching. If you've got an excess of plums or want to buy four pounds of plums in the store, give this a try. I think it's going to be appreciated. I don't want to open any of the other jars. I want to let it set for several weeks. Most of this sort of thing is much more flavorful if you let it set for a few weeks.